So I went to the tax man the other day. It's always such a thing for us. Nothing is the same from year to year. Kids, no kids, business losses, expenses, profit, all the things. And every year we wait for the, is it a refund? Or do we have to pay in news? We're holding our breaths. We've been going to the same guy for quite a few years now, and he has got telling us the news down to an art. But it always feels like weigh-in day at the gym with a new client. They come in, they tell me how good or how bad they've been, and they hold their breath while looking away and getting on the scale. And those that get the game news when they felt like they were doing great, are met with a few questions. Were you tracking your food? How were you tracking your food? What, what did your protein, your carbs, and your fats look like? How about your calories? Your water? And more recently, with my female clients, what week of your cycle is it? And what week did you measure before? So one, if you're not tracking at all, and you don't have any idea what you're eating and what results might be, you're probably in for a shock. And two, if you have been tracking, but not really knowing what the dial movers are, your results might be a bigger shock. Which brings us to today's topic, menopause and the importance of calories and macros and hormones. Because here's the deal. It all matters. But not necessarily how diet culture would have us believe. So let's start with the calories. First, yes, they matter. Because even if you're eating a nutrient-dense food, but you're eating 5,000 calories a day and not putting out that much, you're going to gain weight. And there's no magic in that 1,200 calorie number either. It seems pretty arbitrary, actually. And for most people, it's a significant calorie deficit. So weight loss is inevitable, at least in the beginning. We need to be careful here because our body is highly adaptable and recognizes a famine or a diet when it sees one. And it does so pretty quickly and scales back the basal burning factor so you won't die. Now let's talk about macros for a few minutes. A great way to make sure you're getting lots of nutrients like protein, carbs, and fat versus just 1,200 calories of sugar or simple carbs. I've seen a lot of non-vegetable eating vegetarians in my life. And this usually means there's some vegetarian muffins, maybe some meat substitutes, and lots of energy drinks. Because calories were the driver, not calories and macros. So with macros, there can be an emphasis on protein, my personal favorite, and a realization that 100 grams of carbs doesn't get you much more than a convenience store muffin and a baked potato. or it could be, uh, breakfast could be an omelet with a cup of red peppers, a cup of mushrooms, and a cup of spinach. And for lunch, three cups of mixed greens with another cup of mixed vegetables. And for supper, a sweet potato, a cup of sweet potato, a uh, half a bag of green beans, and an apple, both of which are 100 grams of carbs, but the muffin is 700 calories, well, all those vegetables are only 500. Here, though, we're using the macros as a driver. There's a lot more food to keep you full longer. And we could still be in the 1,200 calorie a day famine zone. And that's still not even the whole story. Let's layer in the effects of hormones. First, there's the the layer of hormones that are affected by the food choices you're making. And second, there's the hormones of your cycle 
affecting the food delivery and preferences. So let's start with the relatively controllable hormones, hormones, the ones that you call up with your food choices. Let's start with the Milky Way. First, there's the sugar spike, followed by the insulin spike, leading to the sugar crash, and the ghrelin and leptin causing cravings and hunger, and a side of cortisol to store fat. Or, four ounces of steak. Garolin and leptin are satisfied, so not causing any craving. There's no insulin or cortisol spikes and crashes, which leads to better sleep, better energy, better libido, and better concentration. Ah, but what about my black coffee? First thing in the morning. That's going to lead to a cortisol spike, which leads to fat storage. Oh, but I don't like my coffee black. I like it sugared up with whipped cream on top. Just have milk away. Now, you can blunt the effects of the Milky Way or the coffee by having steak first, right? If you have the steak first, your insulin will not drive so high. Your cortisol will not drive so high with that Milky Way or that coffee. But you have to have the steak first. So less insulin, less cortisol, less fast storage, less sugar crashing, spiky. Eat the steak first. Now, finally, there's the layering in of our hormone cycle. Even if you're postmenopausal, remember you have a hormone cycle, you just don't have a period. And it's not such large ebbs and flows. Okay? So the first half of your month, your hormones dictate a preference for using carbs. Lean into the carbs and you're still going to gain weight. But if you do carb cycling in order to lose weight, you're likely to burn it off in the absence of insulin and cortisol. Second half of the month, your body and hormones prefer to use fat and need a bonus two to 400 calories a day. Yay, PMS cravings are actually just a need for more food. Caution, this can be just a bit of a cookie and that could trigger an insulin and cortisol response or use the calories for a healthy fat-filled avocado to cover the cravings with the calories so that leptin and garotin, garolin are being satisfied, but keep carbs steady and burn the fat. Essentially, eating the same in week two and week four of your cycle are going to cause opposite effects. One is going to gain and the other is going to lose. But either way, that Milky Way needs to be after your staff. Right? Now back to the tax man. 15 years ago, I had no idea what levers to pull to get a refund. Do I need to put extra money in my 401k in December and then next year plan differently? How about those extra business trip expenses? How is that affecting me? Do I pay January's college tuition in December or wait till January? And the tax man and I sat down and talked about all of the ways that these things of fact based on what my year had looked like. Now today I track a little bit closer every month and I consult him at the end of November and see what my best course of action is. Same for my food. 25 years ago I just ate less calories and my much younger body tolerated the famine better than it does today. Today I use my hormone cycle to fast or to carb cycle. I eat my steak first. I always lead with protein and vegetables, keeping my calories out of the famine zone and very nutrient dense. And while this may sound difficult, like 15 years ago taxes did, it's just because it requires some forethought and a little bit of attitude change around food. So go ahead and have the pizza, 
but use it as a side to your chicken salad. Have the coffee after breakfast and save the sugar coffee for breakfast during the first half of your cycle. Really want to fast? Only a day or two in the second half of your cycle will really accelerate some weight loss for you. Now, if you combine enough protocols from the use your cycle method, and with just a few months worth of practice, the weight will be melting off with ease and no hunger. And just like 15 years ago, I had to learn all of the levers that affected my taxes. The use your cycle method can lead to years of happy hormones, good energy, sleep, and concentration if you put the effort in first. And now, like my November check-ins with the tax man, a four-week jumpstart program at the beginning can get you pointed in the right direction, but maybe without the knowledge of what you're doing and more of a because I said so rationale. For more information on working with me and learning the use your cycle method, feel free to email me at denise at nowgetgoing.com. And until next time, happy days.